Hey guys, Jim here and welcome back to the channel. On this week's video, we're taking a deep dive into the world of turbo inlet options for your 15 to 21 Subaru WRX. We're going to be taking a look at what a turbo inlet is, why you would want a replacement, the options you have to replacement, and which one is right for you. So go ahead and stick around and let's get going. That's right, guys, we've got a whole bunch of turbo inlets and, you know, one post MAF hose kit, which we will get into a little bit later once we get it off the car. I wanted to give you a better idea of what you're in for when we're talking about turbo inlets for your VA chassis FA engine WRX. With these cars aging, there are some issues with our plastic turbo inlet cracking and kind of leaving these cars with either a massive vacuum leak or other issues that come with just plastic failing over time. So the lovely people over at Cobb, Perrin, Grimspeed, PLM, and quite a few others have decided to make aftermarket turbo inlets. Not only are we trying to help these cars out, but while we're at replacing it, why not give it a little bit more performance? And that's where a lot of these will come in. Although you could have the option of just replacing your factory turbo inlet, you know, with another plastic factory turbo inlet, in my opinion, there's some better options on what you should do once we get to the point where a turbo inlet becomes a problem. Now we're going to remove the factory inlet first. Once we do that, we're going to put it on the bench and then we're going to compare all of our different options and see which one is right for my application, which also might or might not be the right one for your application. But that's why we're going to go over all of this stuff today. We're going to show you the differences. Let's get this thing off of here. Well, there's no better place to start than from the beginning. And with the beginning is your factory plastic Subaru turbo inlet pipe, just like the one I have in my hand. This is the one that your car as well will be equipped. Now, depending on if it's 2015 to like 17 and then 18 to 21, there's a small difference in the way they connect the PCV system, but the overall diameter and the construction of your factory turbo inlet is the same. Since we're here to not only compare quality, but performance, we're going to take some standard baseline measurements off of our factory pipe. But before we even get to that, why would you even care about replacing this thing? I mean, this thing seems pretty solid and there's nothing really wrong with it, at least at the moment. Uh, so why would I want to replace my factory turbo inlet? Well, that's easy. If you haven't noticed by now, well, it's plastic and it's attached to one of the hottest parts of the motor, which is your turbo, which is just run by exhaust gas. So this thing is absolutely by a high heat scenario for the vast majority of its life. And with it being plastic, there is a high probability with time and mileage that you're going to see stress or heat fractures all over this thing, especially where your blow off valve meets to the turbo inlet. Also, depending on what you've got tugging on this thing, if you've got any aftermarket intakes or anything like that, you can start kind of cracking right where the flange meets this tube. Thirdly, this is kind of designed for silence. Although the car is turbo, Subaru doesn't expect you to just want whirly boy noises for the whole life of the car. So included in your turbo inlet here, I'm not sure if you can see, maybe if I turn it around, there are these small little cubbies that are hidden in here. And what that does is kind of decrease that spool turbo noise that you might be a customer might even want to hear in your turbo WRX. So most of the time replacing a turbo inlet is also going to give you some more of those really cool turbo spoolie boy noises. All in all, that's the basics on why you would want to replace this, whether it's bad and you need one for the future, or if you're just looking for a dab more performance, plus the rigidity of not having to worry about this thing cracking and breaking in the future. Now that we've got why we want to replace it, let's take some measurements so we can compare it to our new turbo inlets. OK, 
Okay, so it looks like we have a baseline of our turbo inlet and turbo outlet diameters. And just so that we're all on the same page with all of the numbers that we hear and where we're speaking about those numbers, we're gonna consider the opened end or the larger end, the physical turbo inlet, since the air is going to be going in that side, and our smaller flange end, we are gonna be considering this our turbo outlet since that air is moving in that direction. So for our OEM measurements, our turbo inlet measures at 65.22 millimeters and our turbo outlet measures at 48.18 millimeters. Once again, can't tell you if that's good or bad yet. I just know that that's what the factory is. So I think the easiest thing to do is start with a very similar style product in our turbo inlet comparison. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the Cobb aluminum turbo inlet that resembles this part. Okay. Look at that. I mean, there's some pretty clear differences right out of the gate. Clearly, the Cobb one is an aluminum-based piece, where the factory one is a plastic-based piece. So we're already going to be able to tell you that this will probably last the lifetime of the vehicle, if not longer, sans any, like, accidents or you banging this thing onto something. I would say this is going to last 100 years. This will barely last 100,000 miles. On top of that, we can clearly see there's going to be a diameter difference on our turbo inlet because this factory plastic is considerably thicker than the aluminum wall that the Cobb has, but we'll get to that in a second. It also kind of looks like that the back half is gonna be quite the same. Now, I do know that when you have the factory inlet, this kind of outlet piece here overhangs on the turbo a little bit where I know that this has been machined to exactly meet the diameter of the turbo. So we should get a considerable more amount of airflow through this piece than we would this piece. One thing you might notice as well is the factory piece has all of these nipples attached here where the cob, hmm, not so much. Well, the reason that is, is in our box is also a whole bunch of adapters that kind of attach to this to allow you to kind of change certain things about it. Or uh, if for any reason whatsoever, one of these nipples were to break or get damaged of any sort, you can just replace that piece instead of replacing the entire, you know, turbo inlet. Seems pretty easy. Ah, even better. It's got that little Cobb logo on it, you know. That's worth some sort of cool points. Oh, one on the bottom too. Super cool. Nice and sturdy. It wouldn't be science if we didn't get to our measurements, so let's start there. Here we go, we have our Cobb number. So our turbo inlet, which is the wider end, um, is a 69.6, where our turbo outlet is a 49.77 millimeter. So that should do quite a bit as far as flow goes over top the factory inlet. The other thing to talk about, unlike our factory inlet, this is a relatively smooth surface in here. So there's none of those cubbies or compartments to kind of disturb the air or disrupt that airflow as it's going by. So I would imagine this piece right here is going to make a considerable amount more whirly boy noises than our factory piece. Another thing I feel I have to touch on is the Grim Speed Turbo Inlet. Now a lot of times you will see our Cobb Turbo Inlet compared to our magical Grim Speed Turbo Inlet that unfortunately isn't here due to the fact, well, it just wasn't in stock at the time of this video. But it does share a lot of similarities between the Cobb. It's a little bit larger at the top, slightly larger at the bottom. It's also an aluminum base piece that gets rid of all the cubbies. So which one do I think you should go with compared to the Cobb and the Grim Speed? I can't quite tell you, but if you are looking for a similar piece to the Cobb, and I think the Grim Speed actually might come in a couple of dollars um, cheaper, depending on if it's in stock or you're looking to have it shipped to you or whatever your wait times are, maybe it's another piece that you could consider. Maybe in a different video I could compare the Cobb to the Grim Speed, but I will tell you that just from seeing both of them in person without my dial indicator, they are very, very similar pieces. The only real difference I've seen is the Grim Speed doesn't have the attachable or detachable nipples on here. It's just all cast into one piece. Once again, being aluminum, I think you're going to be hard pressed to actually break some of these to need to replacement. So it's just kind of six or one half dozen to the other. They are very similar pieces and I would imagine they would be within a millimeter difference between each other, you know, depending on your inlet and outlet size. But it is something to keep in mind. 
Grim Speed isn't quite off the hook in this video since we do have another piece from them which we will talk about later on in the video, but now since we've talked on our hard inlets, I think we're going to move into a different realm, which is our silicone soft inlets, and what do I think about them compared to, you know, a replacement piece like this? First on the bench is going to be the Perrin piece. You've probably seen this thing on the internet. So we'll just open it up and show you. We've got all of our cool hardware in a bag, which we will not need at the moment. But what we're mostly concerned about is our turbo inlet hose and our turbo inlet flange. This thing looks pretty cool. Nice. So as you can see, Perrin's gone with a little bit different approach to the turbo inlet setup than, let's say, the Cobb or the Grim Speed, which is pretty much just an aftermarket replacement for a factory part. What Perrin has done is they've decided to replace the entire, not only inlet, but that rubber accordion hose that's underneath the car all as one piece. And in order to attach that to our turbo, we have this nice aluminum velocity stack looking piece that will attach there, and then this will attach onto our flange. So what are my thoughts about this? I actually like this piece a lot. I think that that Venturi right here is really gonna help promote good airflow into the turbo and I think it's the best way to get the most amount of air at any given time into that turbo to make performance and power even over some of the Cobb or Grim Speed parts. Now here's what most people I think would consider the downside and that is that this is now a silicone turbo inlet instead of like a hard aluminum piece. So most people would think that under high load scenarios, this would have a higher probability of collapse. But I will tell you, this has a stainless steel wire that's corked inside of this silicone. So you are pretty hard pressed to squeeze this thing together. And I do think that this has some pretty good rigidity. And I think that you'd be, you know, in a pretty serious horsepower range to collapse this on the dyno, especially with a good intake system that's gonna be flowing a lot more than your factory filter or air box. In my opinion, I mean, you're probably in the five to 600 horsepower range before this becomes, you know, not really a thing anymore. As far as longevity, silicone usually holds up pretty good, especially with a company like Perrin. I mean, I just think that this will also last you a good long time, especially for probably the lifetime of the car. All it will really do is maybe dry out a little bit and not look as nice and black and shiny. But, um, you know, with a quality multi-layer silicone piece, I think you're going to be really hard pressed to destroy this thing uh, in any kind of time. So how do we measure this? Because this has a much larger inlet here, but it also tapers down to fit your factory part here. On top of that, we also have another piece to measure. Do we measure it from the width of our Venturi? And of course, we can easily measure the interior of our outlet right here. So we're gonna start with the outlet because this is going to be pretty relative through all of our turbo inlets, no matter which style we use. Okay, well, we've got some pretty good numbers here, and we're going to have to kind of figure out how we're going to take this information because there's so much more to measure here than there was with just like the Cobb or Grimspeed style replacement pieces. But let's start with the easy stuff. So our turbo outlet, which all of these, you know, have and is a very similar situation, this one comes down to 49.93 millimeters. So by about 0.2 millimeters, the Perrin has the largest diameter turbo outlet. But where I think this thing really shines is our Venturi, which comes in to about 77.95 millimeters from outside to outside. And I think that that large Venturi mouth is going to help gain all of that air and funnel it into our turbo outlet and probably do the best job from a performance standpoint, getting the most amount of air to move into your turbo. The other thing we have to factor in here is this smaller diameter piece on the pipe. Now, this whole entire silicone is rated at roughly three inches and at about 78 millimeter, they are pretty right on with that. But this does neck down to meet up to your factory joiner pipe that goes from here up to your intake box. Now, this diameter 
comes out at about 68 millimeters before it starts to kind of expand into our three inches. Now the Cobb and Grimspeed aftermarket turbo inlets will still use your factory accordion pipe here, which has a whole bunch of, you know, little crevices for all of your air to get trapped in for there to be turbulence, which cuts down on intake noise. So I do believe even though you will get some noise from the Cobb and the Grimspeed, by replacing your turbo inlet with a Perrin, you will get the most amount of noise and the most amount of performance for a relatively stock vehicle. So what do you mean by relatively stock vehicle? Well, I will go into that. So if you end up running like an aftermarket intake on the car, most intakes will come down to right about here on the vehicle. So what that means is when you go to use a stock inlet with an aftermarket intake, we can connect our aftermarket intake directly to this turbo inlet, where if we were gonna use this and then put in an aftermarket intake later on down the road, that might be an issue, or we would have to modify this hose by cutting it in order to slide our pipe in. Now, once again, keep in mind that this is stainless steel reinforced in here, so not only do you have to cut the silicone, but you also have to cut into a stainless steel wire. It's not exactly hard, but if you're not 100% handy, this might actually come as a problem once you start doing modifications to your car later down the road. So where I think this is a fantastic choice for stock and aftermarket, it does require a little bit more you know, ingenuity than just putting a Cobb or Grimspeed piece on. Here we go, this is the winner, right? This is absolutely what I would choose. Well, hold on for a second because we have the PLM version of the same exact thing. So then you might be asking, well, what's really the difference? And quite frankly, we're about to find out because initially looking at the Perrin and the PLM, they are very, very similar. So once we pull it out of the box, we'll see if we can tell any differences, if there's any diameter upgrades or downgrades, or why would I choose the Perrin over a very similar PLM piece? Here we go. Well, this is the PLM piece. You know, very, very, very similar to our parent piece. In fact, let's, uh, let's compare our flanges. Visibly, you know, there's a there's a coating difference. The Perrin has kind of like a matte finish where this has more like a high gloss anodized finish. Um, but as far as the looks on them, I mean, they are almost identical. Crazy. On top of that, let's take a look at the hosing. So here is our Perrin hose compared to our PLM hose. Once again, very similar, almost indistinguishable if you didn't have the Perrin logo actually kind of etched in on the silicone. The only other thing I could say is it looks like the nipple length on our PLM is a little bit longer than the Perrin. Now, I have no idea if that's going to come in handy or be kind of a nuisance until we start putting, you know, one of these two on. But for the moment, they are very similar. Nice. But they can be similar all day long. We need to get to some numbers, right? So we have the Perrin stuff over there, the PLM here. Let's get to measuring. And there we have it, our final numbers, at least for the PLM. So let's talk about our turbo outlet, which is the piece right here. We came in at 50.02 millimeters, which by like a very, 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 very tiny margin is the largest opening of the three. Next is our turbo inlet, which is here, which comes out to be 77.48, which compared to our 77.95, there is a very, very small difference between our turbo inlet diameter as well. And just to knock it all off, we measured our small neck down for our intake side, and that also measures at 68 millimeters, exactly the same as the parent. So let's talk about these two real quick before we go any further. It does look like they are almost identical from the PLM to the parent piece. So which one would I choose? Well, quite frankly, depending on which one's in stock, I actually don't even know if they come in different colors or if that stuff matters to you, but I would say whichever one is in stock, ready to ship at the best price, that's kind of the one that I would go with. As far as I'm concerned, these things are almost identical with the exception of like the anodizing style between the matte black parent and the high anodized gloss finish of the PLM. Now, maybe the other thing that I could look at is potentially hardware. We didn't really go much into that. But the PLM has aluminum barbs and, you know, standard clips and clamps. 
while the Perrin has aluminum and plastic barbs and kind of the same style clamps. So I would say these things are almost identical and it would really come down to which one's in stock. Am I loyal to a particular brand? Would I spend a little bit more money on the Perrin to get almost the same product as I would the PLM? Who knows? I think that's kind of a personal preference. Sometimes I will absolutely, you know, spend a little bit more. And when I say a little bit more, I mean, I'm talking like, you know, 10 bucks or 15 bucks on a similar product with a better brand name because maybe sometimes it just makes me feel a little bit better in my heart but at the end of the day these two pieces are very similar and i think whichever one you want is the one you can get and if you want to keep a little bit more money in your bank account then i would say choose the plm over the parent but both are a good option so which one's going on my car right that's the other big question why would I put a lesser version of anything on my car? I'm going for the mostest. So why am I not just slapping one of these bad boys on or one of these bad boys on? Well, at the end of the day, I wanted to kind of throw a little wrench in this scenario. And that's where our last piece comes in. Now we've kind of gone over the turbo inlets from both the hard uh, aluminum style and the softer silicone style. But there's something else I want to show you from Grimspeed since I couldn't get their turbo inlet. I wanted to involve them in the video so it wasn't just, you know, in memory of. I actually have something Grimspeed that I could show you because I know a lot of you guys and myself love their stuff. I have the Drycon filter in this car and it does fantastic. I love that combining with my modified intake, uh, you know, and then the, the blow off valve on the car. And I just love the way this thing sounds. It, it does street digs all day and I get really good 60 foots and I'm just, I'm super excited about the car. And I wanted to continue to put some Grimspeed stuff in this video because I know you guys like it but let's take a look at what I got boom so the other thing that I have on the table is actually a post math intake kit from Grimspeed look at this nice but it's two pieces there's one elbow and then one kind of like straight pipe piece plus all the clamps and stickers and everything you know to love so what's a post math intake kit? So on my car or cars like my car where I'm running the factory airbox, there are these black rubber style accordion pipes that do not promote very good flow. And once again, they are kind of designed to kind of take some of that turbo noise out of the vehicle so that you're not just whistling diesel all the way up the street. But in my particular scenario, I want to hear this thing from two or three streets over without spending a whole bunch of money on the intake or at least not at this point in time. Another option is to pair the Cobb or the Grimspeed Turbo Inlet with a post-math pipe that gets rid of all of our factory, you know, accordion style pipes. Then there's going to be kind of like a hard elbow here. And then this piece right here would go up to the airbox in your physical car and it gets rid of both of those factory rubber hoses. So this seems like a pretty good option, right? You got your Turbo Inlet, you got your post math hoses i've got my you know drycon grim speed filter with my highly modified hot rod air box this seems like you know a situation that i would love to go with so what are the drawbacks well the real drawback is price by the time you've purchased a filter you've purchased the post math kit and you've purchased either the grim speed or the Cobb turbo inlet we're at the price of you know kind of a decent intake system that would probably make more power than all three of these things combined. So that just doesn't seem like a really good idea. But hold on there, because that's not always the case. What happens is a lot of times when you buy these aftermarket intake systems, they could be in the upper three, four, potentially $500 range that you have to spend right off the bat. Then you've got to worry about tuning for your aftermarket intake. The great part about the Drycon filter combined with our post math hose and our turbo inlet is these can all be purchased a la carte. So if you've got 50 bucks from your paycheck this week, you can buy the filter. If you've got $150 from your paycheck next week, you can buy the hose. And then if you've got $200, you know, three months from now, you can buy your inlet. And by that time, you've got a halfway decent running, not needing a tune intake system. You'll have all the noises you would ever want out of the car and the reliability of not worrying about any of this stuff breaking, at least in the near future which I also think is a fantastic upgrade. If you have the money to combine all these, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but you can do it in stages. You can put out a little bit now, a little bit later, and with time, you'll have a decent intake system. But the downside is if you spent all that money, you could have just saved up and bought like a nice ETS or Cobb intake and made a little bit more power, but you still have to worry about a tune. So there's always something. But for my particular case, 
I think I'm going to give the PLM turbo inlet hose a shot. Why is that? I've already got a modified intake box with my filter and hot rodded air box. In my case, I think I'm going to benefit the most from putting a nice silicone turbo inlet on there. And if I decide to go with another intake in the future, I can just modify my silicone to accept the new intake. Not to mention from a price point, if I'm going to do one or the other silicone turbo inlets, the PLM is about $15 cheaper, or at least at the time of making this video. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Should I have went with a hard inlet? Well, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything else you guys want to see on this car, please let me know, man. We're here to make videos. We want to impress you guys. We want to show you all of the options that are out there. Not just like, hey, man, I really like Parent. I'm going to put that on the car. Like... Look at all this stuff. Look at all these options. And, and just because I like it doesn't mean you'll like it and vice versa. Everybody's car and everybody's build is different and everybody's budget is different. So that was a pretty good look at all of these options. Let's go ahead and throw the PLM three inch turbo inlet on the car and see what difference it makes. Oh yeah, and you know I'm gonna do a draggy head after this, right? Skirt! Hey, since we're here, I might as well show you the difference between our fully disassembled accordion pipe plus our turbo inlet, which is this whole piece that our PLM is going to replace today. So once again, it is not just our plastic you know, turbo inlet right here, but it also uh, comes in conjunction with this rubber accordion, you know, very restrictive flow pipe there. So all of these little accordion pieces here do kind of help with this thing moving and flexing around with everything under the hood moving, but it also does disrupt flow quite a bit from our big straight three inch high flow silicone. See what I mean? Nice. All right, gang, well, there we have it. The new PLM Turbo Inlet is on the car. Not all that difficult. I would say, you know, the most annoying part is you think you have all the tools out from getting the old one off, and then, you know, you go to put the new one on and go, ah, oh, you know, maybe the clamps are a little bit different size or something like that. So it's a little annoying to have to kind of get off my back and go to the toolbox and get more stuff. But really, all in all, it really isn't that bad. In retrospect, maybe I would have jacked the car up a little bit more to try to squeeze under there so I wouldn't keep banging my head off the concrete, but once again, not all that bad. Definitely something that I think you guys with a little bit of mechanical knowledge could easily take care of, you know, in your driveway with basic hand tools. Once again, I chose the PLM depending on if you have an intake and you're just looking to replace that turbo inlet or if you're an all stock or mostly stock setup like myself, your opinion on which turbo inlet may or may not differ. I will tell you though, you can't really go wrong with an aftermarket turbo inlet. Any of the ones that we showed on the video today are a great choice and it really all comes down to what is your goals and what's your future goals on the car. This is something that you might be able to think ahead with or if you're just happy with the factory intake and trying to put a panel filter in there and get a little bit more noise out of that turbo you could go with the PLM or the Perrin or if you just want to replace that old rusty crusty plastic piece with a new one and you already have an intake or think that you're going to be upgrading to an intake in the future the Cobb and the Grim Speed are also a fantastic choice. But now is for the big time question. Does the car sound any different and does it perform any different? I will tell you, since we do have the upgraded three inch pipe with the Venturi into the turbo, I do think that there is the possibility that the car gains a little horsepower without a tune, but I would definitely say you're going to get most of your performance gains while adding a tune onto your new turbo inlet, no matter which one you choose. With that being said, let's get the draggy out. Let's go to our closed course in Mexico, do a couple of hits. What do you say? Let's go. Yeah, we're behind the wheel. I've been driving this thing for a few minutes and guess what? We got a lot more spoolie noises. That's super cool and super what I was expecting to hear out of a modification like this. Let's see if I can get it to do it. Hold on. Huh, there you go. I'm 
not sure if you can hear that through the camera, but it is definitely much more audible through the cabin. I've also kind of been driving around with the windows down, and you can definitely hear that as that turbo spools up with our new turbo inlet, which is something I didn't have with the older inlet. So we're going places, we're making things happen. a few minutes driving the car and let the fuel trims kind of set in with our new turbo inlet i think we're going to take it for a rip i'm feeling good today it's a nice day it's time for a new personal best don't you think let's try it out Well, boys, we are back. Got the hood popped, cooling her down. That was a lot of fun, man. We did some good ripping today. I feel really confident. In fact, so confident. Look, I got my paperwork out, ready to go. But you can't see that yet, man. You don't want to know these numbers yet. There's some stuff we got to go over first. Well, gang, we're back. Got the numbers. I'm sure you want to discuss it, right? Well, let's get right to it. So our previous personal best, the best the car ever had we're going to go over those numbers right now and that was a 188 60 foot with a 0 to 60 of 4.93 we clocked in our best eighth mile at 8.65 at 80.25 mile an hour once again that is a pretty healthy run for a basically stock wrx we do have the silver's neo max coilovers on it the cosmos 18 by nine and a half um xt 005s on there i don't think that's really helping or hurting performance but we do have the noble titanium cat back which gives us a little bit of kind of like some weight savings with that 10.6 pound exhaust on it uh, but as far as other performance mods go to the car we just have our drycon drop-in filter and now we have our plm turbo inlet but that's enough jabbering what do the numbers say well today our best run that we were able to pull out of the car with our brand new plm turbo inlet was a 60 foot of 1.87 so that beats our best run ever eighth mile but our best 60 foot to date has been a 1.86 so we're doing pretty good with hovering around that 186 to 188 60 foot as far as the 0 to 60 goes, our best of 4.93, we could not beat today with a 5.17. Here's where it gets nice and juicy and where I think our turbo inlet is finally starting to make a difference. Our best eighth mile to this moment was an 8.65. And today, we also ran a 8.65. The difference being the previous mile an hour was an 80.25 where we clocked in at 80.66 mile an hour. So the big news is here at the back half of our eighth mile, we're finally starting to lose time and gain mile an hour. So I do think that the turbo inlet is finally doing something for performance. The two other things to note is temperature and DA. Even though we tied our very best eighth mile today, our previous run was done at 64 degrees, where today is a nice 75 degrees. So we're a little over 10 degrees difference and still matched our best ET with a better mile an hour. The last thing to talk about is DA, which is basically our air density. So because the air was so cool, we clocked in at a DA of 409, where today being a 75 degree day and a little bit warmer, we were at 1013. So both the temperature and DA was going against us where we tied our personal best, but with a better mile an hour. So what I would say is today, right now with our turbo inlet becomes our brand new personal best. That's the kind of information I'm looking to bring home and I think I did it and I'm very proud of myself and I'm very proud of the car up until right now. The biggest thing to gain out of this is although you can do some of these modifications and it might give you more longevity with the car and minuscule performance upgrades, I really think that we're going to hit a wall of trying to continue to beat our personal best without any tuning or any real performance modifications. Now it's safe to say I'm ready to start putting some performance modifications on this car, including access port. In our next video, we're going to be flashing the stage 193 map on this car, and we are going to try to go out and break our personal best. 
I mean, pretty much right away. I would imagine that with a few more horsepower and a few more extra foot-pounds of torque, I've got this car pretty dialed in, and I should see some substantial number dropping when I put our Cobb map on. Another quick secret, I have been sitting on a whole stack of performance parts. So once I put the Cobb map on this thing and we kind of do a couple of digs to, just to see what our off-the-shelf map can do for us, I guarantee you we're going to be switching gears and going relatively decent horsepower, at least for stock turbo. But we're going to be maxing this thing out with all kinds of good parts, including the big old E85. At that point in time, I really think I'm going to have a pretty decent running car, and I'm super excited with how the numbers are going to turn out after those modifications. So thanks for joining us. This was a really fun video. I enjoy kind of getting a couple of different parts and showing you, you know, what your options are. Everybody just seems to like buy a part and then just be like bent on. This is the greatest one ever. There's no reason to buy any other one than the particular part that I purchased. And I want to come in and say that that's not necessarily true. There is a whole bunch of parts that could potentially be good for your build that isn't good for somebody else's build, and it really just comes down to budget and what kind of stuff you like. As far as I'm concerned, any one of these turbo inlets probably would have given me the same personal best that I did today, but I can with confidence tell you that I did gain what I think is something out of this turbo inlet. Not only did it give me the longevity of having this for the life of the car, but I now feel like the butt dyno and the numbers are starting to match the parts that I'm putting on the car. So if there's more stuff you want to see, more head-to-head -head comparisons on either the VA, the VB, or the BRZs, let me know. I love doing this stuff, man. I love getting behind the wheel, testing performance parts, and seeing what I think is the best bang for buck for you guys out there. For thousands of parts, just like everything you saw today, be sure to hit up importimageracing.com for all the best deals on the web and in the world, and I'll catch you on the next one.